the biggest story of the night taking place in Atlanta at the SEC Championship. Let's roll the tape. Coming in at play number three, first drive for Marksville, and the stud himself, Daniel Miller, I told you about him already, calling his own Demon. number. Yeah, I mean, what will you say, Fitz? Call him a temptation. He's a rolling stone. And I'm actually going to try to catch up with a couple fans right now. Hey, excuse me, how are you all ladies doing today? Hi, how are you? Right now, we have a hard time yeah. tackling a trash can. Seriously, so uh, we got to tackle somebody tonight. First quarter, LSU driving. Joe Burrow draws back, and he's got all the time in the world. Believe it or not, this play lasted 16 seconds before he hooks up with Jamar Chase for the 23-yard touchdown pass. And don't forget about our two-a-days coverage. It will continue, and if you download our KLB app. Now, many people here in New Orleans are saying that Zion Williamson is the best thing to happen to the Pelicans since their former number one overall pick, Anthony Davis. The only problem is he spent more time in the rehab center than he has on the court. Now, both teams very similar and nearly identical. Max Pretz ranking both of them in their top 50. Leesville comes in ranked at number 44, as well as the Indians come in ranked at number 47. Now, we're going to take a look at the offenses. You got on an LSU shirt. I'm assuming that you're an LSU fan. I mean, tell me a little bit about the experience and, you know, what it is that means to be here. I feel like they're going to put up 40 points. I've predicted my score. You still think so? Yes. 41, 34. Wow. Like, it's a Clemson defense. You think they're going to allow 40 points from LSU? That's my final answer. <laughs> they, it, that don't matter. They only had 10 oh, seconds don't left. Now. They only had 10 seconds left in the situation they were in with one timeout on fourth down. If you don't kick the field goal, you don't give yourself a chance to win. We're going to win 41-27. Mark my word. All right. Well, the bottom line is one of the Tigers are going to win. We got to decide whether, well, we got to see whether it's going to be Clemson or LSU. And got another Tiger fan with me, but we're going to throw it back to y'all in the studio. In the meantime, it's all love. <laughs> I love the way that ended. Hey, back up! Jacoby and Guillory, a 6'2", 320-pound monster on the defensive line, causes many offenses fits. Jacoby and Guillory down for the... A reason why he'll join the national champs this fall after signing his letter of intent to play at LSU. All right. In the background, you can hear numerous people telling Jacobian it's all right as he gets choked up during his speech while talking about his mother. I was coming back from Shreveport, and my, um, it was me, my stepdad, and my mom. And uh, he's been working all that, like, he been working a lot that week, and uh, he didn't really get any rest. So uh, on the way back, um, he uh, nodded off and went to sleep, and it was a really bad car accident. He didn't get, she didn't make it, so. On their way back to Alexandria from Shreveport, Jacobian lost his mother, Sharika Yvette Vinson, and his unborn sister when he was only six years old. We just was giving her a baby shower that day, and that happened. And it just had been, it took a long, long, long time to really not cry when you talk about it and everything. But my life changed since then. Um, ever since then, my aunt, my aunt raised me, and she raised me. She put a roof over my head for since June 30th, uh, 2007. Through the hardship, Jacobian and Angela's relationship blossomed, going from nephew and auntie to mother and son. Obviously, I'm going to play college football, but I hope to make it to the NFL so I can repay her for all the stuff she's done for me, because what, what she's done for me is really unpayable, but it's just my way of saying thank you. You know, everything to me happened for a reason. We were all blessed by it. We definitely miss her totally and everything, but she still was here. But Jacobian had been blessed, and she wouldn't have it no other way. And even though Jacobian's mother passed away more than 10 years ago, her memory lives on, and her son carries a piece of her every time he hits the field. Yeah, actually, when I wrap my, my wrist or my, my, my wrist with tape, I put uh, 1975 in, on one of them, and that's the year she was born, as you know, kind of play tribute to her. The story of a family that persevered through pain and continues to make the best of each moment going forward. I love him so much, and... I want the best for him, and I'll be there pretty much every game. Corey Howard, News Channel 5, Sports. Take a clock, and now rewind the hands of time back 40 years. Now think about Leesville High School, going for their second state title in three years. Uh, I was not going to be the track coach. We had another track coach that was there as a young guy, and uh, at midterm, he left. And so uh, the head football coach, athletic director said, look, you're going to be our head track coach. And I'm thinking, I don't know anything about track. But somehow the school made it all the way to the state championship with the rookie head coach. But going into the last event, they found themselves behind. We had to, we had to win to at least 
tie Catholic high. Simply put, Leesville had the deck stacked against them. And then it came down to the last piece of the last event with a 400 meters, and our superstar was ready. During the 4x4, four four, Leesville got off to a good start, jumping out to first place in the first leg. But things would eventually go downhill. Uh, handed the baton off to Bernard Matthews, and, uh, you know, no fault of Bernard's, but, you know, he gets passed up. And I think we were in, either in third or fourth place when Bernard handed the baton off to LaVon White. And LaVon just ran a great third leg, pulled us to second place. As it, as it worked out, uh, when Robert Gaines got the stick, uh, he was about 40 yards down, 40 meters down, which is an almost um, impossible mountain to climb at that level. Robert had to chase down Carl Bernard, an all-state running back, who would later sign with LSU. I don't know if it was 40 yards. I think it was a little exaggeration. But um, I just basically closed my eyes and I said, you know what, whatever I got left for me, this is my last race of the year. I'm giving it everything I got. You know, and I'm thinking, my gosh, there's no way that Robert's going to catch this guy. Well, you could just see as the, the race continued on, Robert kept getting closer and closer and closer. And as they came out of that final curve, it's like there was another gear for Robert Gaines. Robert ran a time that would go down in the record books. But the main question is, would it be enough? Oh, it, it was just one of those things that you're, you're saying, Come on, Robert, come on, Robert, come on, Robert. You're there, you're getting there, Robert. And you could just, you could just feel that Robert was going to catch him and pass him. Robert had been a state champion two years before and he knew what it felt like and he knew what it took. And uh, he, he ran this guy down, four, down by 40 meters. He actually caught him at the tape in the Bernie Moore Track Stadium LSU, which is an enormous facility, came to its feet. And to be honest with you, Corey, I don't remember passing him. Because I don't know if anybody told you this, I blacked out afterwards. And then I remember the guys picking me up and kind of took me around like, what are they doing? <laughs> so, and uh, everybody kept yelling, man, you just, we just won the state meet, you passed, you know, Carl Bernard, and I'm like, really? Yes, Robert, you really did it. For that reason, you found your picture in the newspaper. And even to this day, you can still find images on the Leesville Leader Calls website. If you can believe you can do it, then you can do it. And Robert believed that he could catch that guy, and he caught that guy. Uh, I, always, I said this when, when I was uh, accepting my, um, my Hall of Fame. I was so proud of, proud of our community because we always, even today, people remind me of how you know, they supported us and backed us and made sure that we did out of trouble. And we did the right thing. A storybook ending and a piece of history this group will never forget. In Leesville, Corey Howard, News Channel 5, your local station.